Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're going to take a look at Mono Blue, updated with Bloomboro, which introduces Aliuge the Shoreless Sea, a 4 mana star star, power and toughness each equal to the number of islands we control, so it scales quite nicely as the game progresses, and whenever Aliuge enters or attacks, we get to put a flood counter on target land, and that land is also an island in addition to its other types for as long as it has a flood counter on it. And then the first instant or sorcery spell we cast each turn costs a blue mana mana less to cast for each land we control with a flood counter on it. So if we play Aliush, we'll get our first flood counter, we immediately get that one mana discount, and then as Aliush keeps attacking and giving us more flood counters, that cost reduction keeps increasing, and that can easily get out of hand, especially with our various spree cards, which will also benefit from that discount, as the blue mana also discounts the generic mana on these spree costs, so it becomes much easier to cast your three steps ahead, which will now also maybe draw two cards and discard, or create a token that's a copy of an artifact or creature we control. We also have the Phantom Interference, a fine counter spell for two mana, countering unless the opponent pays two, but we can now also maybe generate an additional 2-2 Flying Spirit token to help close out the game. And the cost reduction from Aliush also allows you to keep up interaction and counter spells for free, making it very difficult for the opponent to deal with your creatures. And then we're also playing three copies of Flow of Knowledge as another great payoff for having all these islands in our mana base. We get to draw a card for each island we control and then discard two cards. So with five islands in play, draw five, discard two is already quite good, but as the game progresses it gets even better. And if it gets a discount from Aliush or maybe from Hotijin, then we can cast it while still having author interaction available, so we don't need to completely tap out. And then of course Hotijin is still another win condition for this archetype, gives our spells a one mana discount count and grows if we have more instants and sorceries in our graveyard. So typically when casting spells like Moment of Truth, we want to prioritize putting instants and sorceries in the graveyard if possible to help grow Hotijin, as well as discounting the new Eddy Merc Crab, which I'm playing over a card like Tolarian Terror, since the instant speed on the crab is great, and when it enters we can also tap two creatures down. Now the crab does enter tapped if you play it in the opponent's turn, but even if we don't get to ambush an opposing creature with it, just being able to flash in a 5-5 to start start pressuring the opponent is quite good. And then to help out against aggro, we do need a few bound spells, playing two copies of Into the Flood Maw, which can occasionally gift a tapped fish token to the opponent to bounce an opposing non-creature permanent, so it can maybe interact with artifacts and enchantments. And then we cannot bounce our own creatures with Into the Flood Maw, so it's not a way to protect our own threats. And instead I'm playing four copies of Ephara's Dispersal, which is a bit more expensive if we want to target our own creatures or a creature that's not attacking. But the upside is we also get to Surveil too, another way to maybe dig through the deck and help fill the graveyard for Hotijin, and then if we do cast it on an attacking creature it gets a 2 mana discount, so when you're facing a red aggro deck that's going to be busy attacking you, then it's still a 1 mana bounce spell that also lets us surveil too, so it's got a bit more upside than just casting an into the flood maw, even if the timing is a bit more restricted. And then we already mentioned some of our counter spells, three steps ahead as a hard counter is very valuable, especially if we can copy Hotijin with the additional spree, interference, find counter spell at two mana, and then negate to specifically counter non-creature spells. And then to round out the deck, a few more cantrips here with sleight of hand as something we can cast on turn one, can also help fill the graveyard for Hotijin and our Andy Merc Crab. And then the mana base has 22 basic islands, and then I still wanted to make room for two copies of Blast Zone, which I found to be quite valuable in the current meta game. sometimes just dealing with a bunch of one-drops from the opponent, but we can also level it up to deal with maybe some more expensive artifacts and enchantments, which are otherwise difficult to interact with once they're on the battlefield. Plus, if we have Blast Zone in play and play Aliush, we can still turn it into an island, so we can draw additional cards with our flow of knowledge, so it doesn't really have the drawback of being a colorless source. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is a little clunky in the sense that we have two flow of knowledge and no real interaction outside of three steps ahead. But with double sleight of hand we can improve our draw in the early turns. So still kind of questionable. We're unlikely to cast double flow, but we can maybe discard one to a three steps ahead. So I'll try it. And then depending on the matchup, we can look for specific answers. But a third land is going to be welcome either way. Put on blue-white. And we did find a counterspell here, so that's nice. 
For now I can still slide of hand. Finding a moment of truth. Just want to keep filling the graveyard for the crab. And yeah, against the slower opponents, double flow of knowledge is going to be good to have. I see, Synthesizer cannot let that resolve. So it is an artifact deck. And hit my land drop so I don't need to main phase Moment of Truth. Could already play the crab, but not in a hurry. And probably need to counter the smithy as well as it's the type of card that can generate a lot of value over time. If I had a bounce spell for the token, I would be less inclined to do so. And there it is. All right, so we can Moment of Truth to maybe hit a land drop and then still play two mana crab either way. All right, no lands. So we could grab another Moment of Truth. Aleuge is gonna be okay, but I expect the opponent to have some removal for it too. So I may prefer just Moment of Truth to hit my land drops, Dispersal in the graveyard, and I'll use back in the deck. And then we can Moment in the opponent's turn, perhaps. Thran Spider is acceptable. Yeah, if I play the Crab, I start applying pressure, but I really want to hit my fifth land drop for flow of knowledge. So I'm going to prioritize that. And then in graveyard, three steps ahead. Although at this point I could also keep more spells in library in case the game goes really long. So we can now cast our flow of knowledge. If our opponent presented a planeswalker, for instance, then I would have preferred to play the cramp to start pressuring it. The Vault can also provide some value for the opponents. Alright, can discard some islands. And Blast Zone could also come in handy, but still want to play more islands for another Flow of Knowledge first. And then now we can maybe start playing to the board a bit more. Interference can also be Spreed to leave me with a 2-2 Spirit token. Opponent just activating Thran Spider. That's acceptable. Finds a Fabrication Foundry. That we can let resolve. Even though it can eventually get stuff back from the graveyard as well. And then I'll play the Crab now. Our opponent's getting back Synthesizer. Okay, there's uh, nothing I can do to really counter it. Opponent's Cries. I can counter their 3-mana artifact here so they don't get a token. can also bounce one of the tokens. For now, cast Moment. And then 3 steps ahead seems good. And... Uh, Sure, we can put Interference in the Graveyard. Still good to fuel Haughty Djinn. And I'll grab Eliush now. And then it's a close call between Island or Blast soon, since we might want to start taking it up. For now, attack for five. Yeah, I guess I could go Blast Zone and then play Aliush and then turn this into an island anyway. And then I would still have three steps ahead available as a counterspell. Can also use the Power Stone to help activate Blast Zone. Alright, opponents got their own three steps ahead. So now the question is, do I fight over this? Or do I keep my own three steps ahead for the opponent's turn if they have some board wipe? Then I'm going to regret tapping out. So I think we let this one go. We'll find another Haughty Djinn eventually to apply more pressure. And I can take a Blast Zone instead. 
Right, mind stone and weak stone would generate a token and draw two cards. I think that's enough to warrant a counter spell here. Also could have taken out the crab instead of drawing. Smithy will make two tokens, can bounce one of them. So, could also offer the trade crab for a token if they block, since I can bounce one of them. They may end up just taking it as well. But I guess I wouldn't mind a trade. And then we can just let damage happen here. So we don't have any threats, but we do have some decent cards in hand still. Thran Spider would make a token with Synthesizer. Could consider just getting Blast Zone up to three counters to then blow up Synthesizer, Spider, and leave them with a token. And there's still the Foundry, of course, which can get stuff back. So this is a close call. Our opponent can also still activate the vaults. So they have some tools available. Taking Blast Zone up to three counters would cost me four mana. Yeah, this may be worth countering actually. Counter and then can uh, draw and discard as well. And we need an Ephara's Dispersal, maybe, to bounce a token, discard the land. And then I can still take a Blast soon. Alright, so might be time to pull the trigger on Flow of Knowledge. Could do so now. Although it's not like I can fight over an opposing three steps ahead, so maybe wait for them to activate their land and then cast it. Alright, so we'll let that ability resolve. And then now flow. Alright, there's Hoddy Jin at long last. Nineteen cards remaining. And can uh, pass, or I could play a crab now. I guess I would still have negate available. Yeah, I guess playing crab now is fine. So I don't have to discard to hand size. Another synthesizer I think I do want to negate, even though I'm working my way up to uh, three counter blasts soon. And our opponent now looking at Fabrication Foundry. So Hardy Jin can close out the game in a single attack. So yeah, maybe it was worth it to let the Synthesizer resolve just to keep all the possible protection for Hardy Jin at this point. So Crab attacks. I guess we're fine with the trade, since again, Hoddy Jin is lethal in one attack. Opponent takes it anyway. Play Hoddy Jin. And Dispersal can also return my own creature to hand. So I could play a second Hoddy Jin. If our opponent casts something like a Sunfall, I can counter it twice with Phantom Interference as well. So this seems fine. Okay, pass a turn. Because your opponent does have Anchorage as a potential blocker, although could bounce that as well. So yeah, keeping our original hand with double flow of knowledge ended up paying off. Opponent getting back a spider as another reach creature. That triggers Synthesizer. Could just take the hits and then just bounce the reach creature. As well as the anchorage. Alright, so could put another counter on this.
and of turn bounce Thrain Spider. Opponent can use the vault. But we should be able to just counter whatever they find if it's some instant. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand. Slide of hand on one. Plenty of interaction. Just gotta hope their two drop isn't too threatening. Uh, probably fine with a blast soon against Golgari. Could be an answer to an enchantment like Innkeeper's Talent. It's gonna be a Dread Knight. Better to counter than to remove it once in play. It is gonna start clocking me for three. Probably have to take the hit to keep up interference. Haughty Jin is gonna be a turn four play, so I can protect it. So we will take a bit of damage initially and counter the Sentinel. Could already play the Blast Zone in case I want to put a counter on it. Small chance we do that. So I could still consider bouncing the Dread Knights since I would still have interference for a potential shield route here. I think I'm okay taking it just to give myself more options. Opponent passing with four mana up. So it's not the best window to necessarily resolve a haughty djinn. Could just cast a dispersal now. We get to surveil. Could also moment of truth or we could even take a blast zone putting a counter on it. So got some options. If I'm not playing Haughty Jin next turn, I may want to look for maybe additional threats. So let's cast Moments. And another Haughty Jin counts, or I could grab three steps ahead as another hard counter to protect the first Haughty Jin. Close call. Yeah, I guess we'll grab three steps ahead here. And then keep Haughty Jin in circulation. And then do I bounce the Dread Knight end of turn? Now let's wait. So yeah, next turn I can maybe cast this with three steps ahead backup. Boone's gonna hit us for three again. Now I could be tempted to cast a dispersal as we get to surveil as well. And then flow of knowledge we definitely want to keep. Crab isn't bad either. So next turn, if I play Haughty Djinn, I have three instants and sorceries in Graveyard. So this still costs four mana. I guess it's about to be three mana with Dispersal going there too. So I could play Crab and still Interference. Yeah, I guess we'll put Crab first. Opponent replaying the Dread Knight as a creature, not using the Adventure yet. So that's fine. And then I could still take a Blast Zone here. So their opponent seems to be playing around Interference, kind of delaying their spells. Which kind of plays into our late game of Flow of Knowledge, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So, yeah, let's uh, pass a turn. Since their opponent's keeping up mana, if they go end of turn removal on Haughty Jin and I try and fight over it, then they can untap and have another one. So it's not the best window for it. But uh, I don't mind playing the crab now. It's probably going to get removed, but that's okay. I want to keep into the Flood Maw as kind of an emergency answer to a card like Shieldred. Glissa's a good one too, which I currently cannot counter. I can bounce it, however. Glissa could also be an answer to Blast Zone if they decide to remove counters on it. So, yeah, let's bounce Glissa. Opponent's gonna remove the crab, that's fine. We kind of wanted that to happen. Because now we can play Haughty Jin 
and keep up interaction during the opponent's turn. Although the question is, do we fight over Glissa, or do I only fight over removal spells? I think Glissa is still going to be manageable on the board, especially once we resolve a flow of knowledge. Can block the Dread Knights. Take my turn. And then can start with Moment of Truth, maybe find an extra island for flow. We found another Haughty Djinn instead. Could also grab another Crab as something I can cast to tap down Glissa, which I also don't hate. And then I would still have Interference available, don't have enough blue for three steps ahead. So they might be able to take out my Haughty Djinn then. I think this is still okay. Slide of Hand in Graveyard to power up Haughty Djinn. And then attack. And we'll wait and see what they do. Bonus got nothing. Moves to attackers, play crab. And our opponent seems to have an answer for the djinn. Tear asunder. Okay, so three steps ahead is not quite going to work here since I don't have enough blue mana. Interference just to tamp them out is an option, but also not a particularly appealing one. So, yeah, I think we just let this one go. And another Glissa, just to have it on defense. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I could just counter it, make use of my interference. I could also use interference to make a spirit for four mana. But uh, yeah, given how close this race is, I actually don't mind just countering here. Found a negate, so I'm just gonna attack and then... Our opponent might keep the Dread Knight on defense, attack with Glissa, and then I need to cast Flow of Knowledge to pull ahead, pretty much. They found a Cottage, which is a bit harder for me to interact with. Our opponent's going to keep everyone back, that's even better. Plays right into our Flow of Knowledge plan. And uh, I know what to discard here. FR's Dispersal can bounce something. So Blasun can still answer the Dread Knight, although we're probably more interested in dealing with Glissa. Three steps ahead, also capable of copying a creature. So I could just cast it now for four mana, create a copy of Crab, hit him for five down to three. And then I have Dispersal to bounce Cottage, although not before it attacks. So kind of a tricky spot. Yeah, the problem with Crab attacking into Dread Knight is that our opponent can just chum block forever while drawing extra cards. So making a copy of Crab is kind of the perfect solution. It would be better if I could cast this while countering an opposing spell, uh, which is 6 mana, so that would just about work. But if they instead just activate Cottage, I guess I can block it with a Crab. So yeah, let's pass a turn. Hope our opponent puts the spell on the stack so I can 3 steps ahead with all modes. I guess no draw and discard, but everything else. Put on drew a land. Which, strangely enough, we would have preferred them to draw a non-land card. But now I'll just level up the blast soon. And then I could still bounce the Dread Knight if I plan to destroy Glissa next turn. Hit him for 5. Then our opponent can attack back with Cottage to gain 3. So then we still don't kill them. So I'll be patient. Eliush was a good draw. So now I can play Eliush. Turn Blaston into an island. And now if I try and copy the crab, we can set up a much better attack. We have negate for an opposing removal spell. 
So we should have most angles covered. Glissar attacks. So, interestingly, if I cast a Dispersal, it will kind of use up Eliusha's discount, but I can still negate for two mana. I think I'm fine to just take it. Let them draw a card if they want, or remove counters from Blast Zone, which is what they're going with. They can also remove the blue counter for what it's worth, but yeah, that's fine. So no longer makes blue mana. And our opponent just had a land, so yeah, this should be game over if I wait to untap. I want to three steps ahead copying the crab, but if I attack first I'll get a discount. This is then going to end up costing three mana plus three more to bounce the cottage. So go ahead and attack. And then now we can copy the crab. Could also just bounce two things, which would have uh, worked out fine. So our opponent would have been forced to animate Cottage to chump, but we can bounce that as well. Alright, so it took a little bit of maneuvering, but in the end, that a flow of knowledge dug deep enough to find everything we needed. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Triple Haughty Gin. That's uh, quite a statement. Yeah, I mean, I'll try it. Still need a third lane to cast him. But we might just be able to out aggro our opponents. Who's on green white and rabbits? Okay. Moment of truth is great for filling the graveyard and finding a third land. But there are some two drops that I might have to counter here. A rabbits on Cavern of Souls, so cannot counter Phineas. Fair enough. So could still decide to disperse all the might caller. I think moment of truth is gonna be more important for us. And then I found a land, and we'll put a Slide of Hand in Graveyard. And I'll just tap out for Haughty Djinn. Now that stuff is uncounterable, there's no real point in keeping up Interference. I guess we could still counter a hop to it, which is not technically a rabbit. But then I have Dispersal to bounce the Might Caller. Haughty Djinn still blocks Phineas. Their opponent casting a Burrow Guard Mentor. And a Paw Patch Recruit. So we do get to eat Phineas for free. And then Blast Zone on one also looks decent here, dealing with Recruit and Might Caller. Uh, so that could be a play. Could also just deploy another Haughty Djinn, keep up Ifara's Dispersal to bounce a creature, even though they get a counter from the Recruit. Not opposed to just using Blast Zone, potentially. And then next turn, play another Haughty Djinn. So, what are the odds that the Mentor is not going to be able to attack past Haughty Djinn? I guess if they don't play another creature, seems unlikely. Let's still hang back. Don't know if the two damage is going to be super relevant. But this also gives us more options if we decide to counter stuff instead. A Warren Guard uncounterable. That's another one drop that dies to Blast soon. So maybe they haven't been paying too much attention to it. And now an Evangelist. Sure, so that resolves, I think. If it allows me to use Blast soon this turn, it's probably worth it. Or I can counter. And then end up taking... 10 damage at least, unless I guess I can counter and then Dispersal the Mentor, which doesn't die to Blast soon. Yeah, that's maybe okay. Could also counter and make a Spirit Token here. 
but I think I would prefer to dispersal. So those attack. Unbounce the mentor. Opponent does get an extra counter from the recruits. And then, do we want another Phantom Interference? Not really. Put it in the graveyard to grow Haughty Djinn. And then, just take six. But now Blast Zone cleanly wipes the opponent's board. Don't know if there's any instant speed and destructible tricks I should be playing around on the opponent's side of the battlefield. Hop to it, make three more tokens. Sure, so that's gonna let them scry. But nothing I could have stopped. Alright, so we'll be facing Quest Caller and three rabbit tokens. And into the Flood Moss, not bad. So, next turn I'm attacking for lethal in the air. We know their hand is Burrowguard Mentor, so there's no real reason to attack for 5 here. Can just pass. Play it extra safe. And we'll see what their last card is. A War Leader, yeah, that's actually a pretty good card. So... That would let them either pump the team or make an extra 1-1. But now if I just bounce the War Leader, we have lethal next turn. And there's nothing they can do about it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a very threat-dense hand but little early interaction. So there are matchups where this could be okay. I do need to hit more land drops as well, and Toddy Jin is going to be on the smaller side with only one instant or sorcery. But on the other hand, if we get to cast Dispersal early to surveil, I could not only find my lands, but also fill the graveyard. So then it could work out on the draw. I guess Dispersal isn't bad. All right, let's try it. Red-white, so this is the Boros Tokens deck, which is going to give us time to set up. Although a card like uh, Orobrask's Forge is going to be pretty rough for us to handle if we can't counter it. Plenty of bounce spells for their tokens. And yeah, I would really like to bounce the rabbits just so I can surveil. But it does open up the window for a 3-drop to resolve, as I don't need to fear a counterspell. Alright, we did find a third land, and as much as I want interference, I need to look for land 4. And it's going to be a talent resolving. Could still bounce it with Into the Flood Maw, uh, which can bounce non-creature permanents as well. But then I would gift him a fish, which then draws him a card. So... Yeah, let's just uh, take our turn. And then if I play Haughty Jin, I could still get removed by a uh, Get Lost. But I need to get these threats in play eventually. Hope they don't Orbrask Forge me. Ah, just a Get Lost. And our opponent could still sack Carrot Cake to trigger the Caretaker's talents. Think we run it back, although now Sunfall's also an option. One thing we cannot do with Into the Flood Maw is bounce our own creature. So just need to dodge removal on Haughty Jin for a turn, and then we can potentially take over. Definitely not going to block in case there's a Lightning Helix. And no Sunfall mana available. And 
and it's going to be a Torture Tower plus Lightning Helix, it seems. Just double Torture Tower. All right, still kind of a two for one, but yeah, the talent is slowly taking over. Can play Aliush now. We're just not in a position to play the control game. If they level up talents, we at least get to bounce a token for free, so that's nice. I'll actually try blocking, see if they pull the trigger on a burn spell. And that's why you should really wait until after damage. Since now we let them waste the torture tower. Alright, so we might be sneaking our way back into this game. Although Mirax still a very powerful engine with a caretaker's talent. Attacking will give me an extra counter to give my spells another discount. And then I can Moment of Truth for free now to hit my land drop. And then maybe Flow of Knowledge in the opponent's turn. And no land. But three steps ahead is probably worth it here. And then pass a turn. Archangel Elspeth. Seems worth fighting over. Second so counter, and then also draw and discard. Alright, and then probably ditch a sleight of hand here. Take our turn. Opponent might have another burn spell that they want to combine with our token. Which uh, is a reason maybe not to attack, although we do have a backup Aliush. And we have free counter spell available. So yeah, let's go for it. Our opponent blocks. Let damage happen. Nope, Elspeth's smite. Alright, so in that case, we can counter. Just cast this, and that's it for me, leaving all my mana untapped. Could also either draw and discard or maybe copy a token. But uh, yeah, I guess just countering and leaving up flow of knowledge is reasonable. Although I can still do that if I draw and discard, so may as well. And then a third Eliush might be overkill. Possible they have another smite in hand, of course. Yeah, one Eliush can go. Alright, damage happens. Even with Elspeth's smite, if you put a stop in the end of combat step, you can still let damage happen first and then smite before going to the second main phase. Sunfall, we could let resolve, honestly. And just cast a flow of knowledge first, just to uh, draw some cards. They only get one token, I guess they also draw a card. And then... This card, Island... Sleight of Hand. And then... We can play another Eliush and protect that one. Alright, so... Should probably slide of hand first. So it doesn't waste a free discount. Then I can play Aliush and still cast a one mana flow of knowledge. I think that's right. Each turn, I guess never mind. If I cast a slide of hand, it's also gonna impact the next spell I play. So in that case, I'll just play Aliush. Get a fourth counter. So we get a 4 mana reduction, cast a 1 mana flow of knowledge, and then I could still slide of hand I suppose, or 
activate a map token. We are just digging for more threats like Hot Egen at this point. And then I'll be able to cast a free three steps ahead in the opponent's turn. Another Caretaker's Talent is pretty good here, especially with Mirex. They can also immediately level up to draw several cards. Yeah, I think that's worth fighting over. But that will leave me in a potentially vulnerable position where they can answer Aluge. If I didn't cast Light of Hand last turn, I would have been able to draw to end discard as well. But yeah, Slide of Hand can be a little awkward with Aluge in place since it kind of wastes that free initial spell. So for now, can attack. Boone's just gonna draw with Mirex. And then interference making spirit tokens could also help close out the game. And we just need to find a haughty gin here to try and close it out. Can maybe go exploring, could have done it before attacking too. Find a land. And sure, we'll do it again. And another land, so it wouldn't have made a difference. Can discard those. Boone makes a token and draws. Could cast a free dispersal now. And then Moment of Truth could be worth keeping. Opponent's going to main phase activate Mirex to draw. We can also take up Blast Zone, of course, as an answer to the talents. So that could have been a reason not to counter the previous one. So I can hit for 8, and then next turn close it out. Do have to watch out for Lightning Helix burning me out, but uh, yeah, let's attack. And then do I want a main phase moment, maybe, just to make use of the discount? Find Dispersal. And then I'll slide of hand as well. Another moment. Could cast it now, so I don't waste a discount in the opponent's turn if I want to interference with all modes. Find another one. Alright, so we should be close to finding more creatures. Our crabs and haughty gins are still in there. But for now we can pass. Opponent's got a Lightning Helix going face. Okay. I definitely want to bounce one of their tokens if I get the chance. Could also block with a Phantom token here for what it's worth. So we do have some options. If I cast Interference, just making a Spirit token to block. I'll still have my Dispersal to bounce Bivouac if they try and block with it. Although taking six still doesn't die to an opposing Lightning Helix, they would need two of them. Which, uh, let's see, I guess they can pay for two interferences, but not for three, and I can cast three of them. So I could still just take it here. And then keep the Dispersal for Bivouac. Main phase Mirex to draw. That's fine. Those tokens don't block. And then I can just take my turn. Could also sack Blast Zone for what it's worth. But uh, probably no need to take that risk. 
play a land and go to attackers. But I was going to try and animate Bivouac to block. And that should do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We have no threats, but a lot of interaction to counter spells to bounce spells. And the surveil is also going to be helpful in digging towards some win conditions. So I'll try it. Turn one planes and warren guard, so another rabbit deck it seems. Could already bounce it here. Although they're unlikely to make a token on turn two. All right, now we get to keep up our counter spell. Just take one. And Evangelist is certainly worth countering. They could have played it main phase to pump the Warren Guard, but they were clearly worried about a counter spell. So now we've got three steps ahead available. It is our last counter spell, so we do have to be somewhat careful with it. Mentor I'm gonna let slide for now, since we have the bounce spells, which are pretty effective against it. Take one. And end of turn we can cast Moments. And Flow of Knowledge has to be the pick over Blast soon. For opponent attacks for three, I think I take it. Could also bounce the mentor, honestly. Don't take two damage, they have to replay it. And I get to surveil. And put those in the graveyard. Still have three steps ahead available. And I'll let that resolve. Okay, so now there's less pressure. For a potential flow of knowledge turn, although Hardy Jin's a nice draw, can play it while still keeping up our three steps ahead. We have a blocker that actually stops their attacks, but we do have to be careful in case our opponent's packing some creature removal. So the quest caller I'm gonna have to let resolve, which means Mentor does have a good attack. Unless we bounce a creature, then we could potentially ambush it still. But yeah, we do have to be very careful since we have a lot of riding on this Hardy Jin. But yeah, technically if I block and then bounce Quest Caller, we get to eat it for free. But then I'll be shields down on three steps ahead. Which could be bad for me. I think I'm still gonna try it. There's not too much instant speed removal in these rabbit decks. If they have a second main case of the Gateway Express, I guess they could finish off my Hardy Jin. Alright, let's just take it. Let's not take any risks. But it was very tempting. Alright, Knight Errant. That one's worth countering since it's going to find them additional threats. And then now we get to untap. Cast Flow of Knowledge potentially and still have Dispersal available. Could do this now. And then one land can go, maybe a sleight of hand as well, just to grow Hardy Gen some more. And we've got a pretty stacked hand now, with a couple more bounce spells. Still gonna play defense for a turn. But we can now try and set up the play we mentioned last turn. Alright, War Leader with Offspring. Okay, I guess we'll, uh, interference. Leaving up Dispersal. And I guess we cannot quite bounce the Quest Caller for the complete blowout. But yeah, opponent's still in pretty bad shape. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand seems reasonable. A little bit 
top heavy with two four drops and a five drop but uh, at least we've got an early bounce spell to stay alive against aggro and the moment of truth to hit my line drops we are up against turn one mountain so it could be mono red although strange not to see a one drop then and it is red white so maybe it is a more controlling deck after all and gotta keep the land here slide of hand in graveyard And I'm fine just tapping out for the first Aluge. The counter will stick around for the second copy. And a Carrot Cake resolves. If you want to bluff having a counter spell, then going full control is not a bad idea when playing a blue deck. But for now, we'll just let it slide. Play Aluge. Which, their only clean answer here if I don't block would be a uh, Get Lost. Gonna be Orobrask's Forge. I can bounce the Forge with into the Flood Maw for now. I guess we need to watch out for an Elspeth's Smite. But we'll see if they also attack with the other 1-1. One, one. Alright, opponent doesn't bother. Take my turn. Attack, and then we're in free spell territory, which is where we like to be with this deck. Opponent jumps. And then a 3-mana Flow of Knowledge is pretty good, I've heard. Although we can maybe wait to get more islands in play first. Bone makes a 2-powered creature, we'll just take it. Possible they're trying to Sunfall 2nd main. And then I'm gonna wanna bounce my own creature. But nope. Opponent passes, so I can Flow. Although then, if they get lost, I wouldn't be able to Dispersal in response, since Floodma only bounces opposing stuff back. So I think I just take my turn here, be patient. Attack for six. Now get a three mana discount. Opponent's gonna jump with our carrot cake token, perhaps. They can also activate fountain port. Could bounce a token before it gets a chance to block, but I'm not too worried. And then now could be a decent window for Flow of Knowledge. I see opponents planning to sack their token to Fountain Port to draw. So that happens, pretty good value. But now they're out of tokens they can sacrifice. And then can flow while we get the discounts. Finding plenty of threats. So Island can go and maybe one Phantom Interference. Could also ditch one Eliush to be fair. Should be able to protect the one in play pretty well. And then if I into the Flood Maw Forge, opponent does get a fish. Which, uh, yeah, we probably want to avoid. And then I'll have to discard one card to hand size. Make it an interference now, I suppose. And Alu should be able to outrace the Orbrask's Forge. Uh, caretaker's talents potentially worth fighting over can cast two interferences so and you know, just double checking here we have three flood counters so i can cast this for two mana while making a spirit and then once again cast interference countering unless they pay two Now I will be out of interferences, so we're a bit more vulnerable to a sunfall next turn, perhaps. Alright, opponent's just gonna let it go. Fair enough. So now we wouldn't mind drawing into a uh, hard counter for a potential sunfall or other answers to the board. Take three. Using dispersal to surveil is an option, but then if they have, like, just a uh, get lost for Eliush, I'll be pretty sad. Take our turn. Moment of truth can maybe find an answer. Let me start by attacking. My opponent did have the get lost. So I can interference again with multiple modes. A 
attack. And then just gonna have to keep up Moment of Truth, or I can cast it now, and that way if I find three steps ahead, I can cast it with Spree in the opponent's turn. No three steps ahead, another Moment of Truth. It would be a cleaner solution if we just get a Moment of Truth, and then the opponent's turn I can cast it, hopefully finding a three steps ahead. And then just counter the Sunfall and pretty much win next turn. But we'll see. You can also Dispersal Aliouge. Forge is going to hit us for four. So next turn, I'm still only attacking for 12 if I hit my land drop. Do we soak up two damage in case we don't get there on a counter spells for Sunfall? Could be reasonable. Could also just into the Flood Maw token at some point, but don't want to waste a discount. I'll still take it. Yeah, I might end up regretting discarding that Phantom Interference earlier. Opponent just with a Carrot Cake, that's acceptable. And we'll see if they do anything with Fountain Port. Demolition Field cannot target my basics. Free Moment of Truth, still have Dispersal to bounce my own creature. Crab could be a way to tap some blockers down. So, if I go to attackers, our opponent's gonna chump sack to Fountain Port again, most likely. If I bounce the token, they can also make another one. So they are buying themselves some extra time here. I'll go with the Crab. And then I don't really want to play it now, because then I'm shields down on Ephara's Dispersal on my own creature. I mean, it is still tempting. They would need a Get Lost specifically to answer Aliush, and we have another one. Yeah, you know what, let's just play the Crab. That way we are at least threatening lethal. Of course they can gain life with a Carrot Cake. And another Dispersal. So I'm attacking for 16. If I actually drew a land, we could have killed them through the life gain from Carrot Cake. But uh, yeah, let's go to Attackers. And then I don't hate the idea of just bouncing the token, although if they sack it in response, I don't get to surveil. So that's also worth considering. Yeah, I guess we can let them chump then. Opponent did not sack to Fountain Ports, interestingly enough. Pass a turn. No need to add more threats to the board. And yeah, their Sunfall was going to happen at some point. So we can Dispersal the Crab. And Flow of Knowledge looks great. And I could Dispersal Aliush as well here, but we have another one in hand. So I think that's fine. Next turn I can play Aliush, essentially cast a free Flow of Knowledge to refuel. End of turn we can play Crab. Maybe I just into the Flood Maw, the uh, Urbrask's Forge now while gifting a fish. So they cannot replay it this turn. The fish also gets exiled. And still keep a Dispersal to maybe bounce a blocker or their uh, Incubator token. Sadly, cannot tap it now. Alright, so step one is going to be play Aliush. Cast Flow of Knowledge. And we found our three steps ahead. So, can attack with a cramp, opponent animates Incubator, we bounce it. They wouldn't be able to sack it to Fountain Port to draw. And we can use maybe into the Flood Maw. Uh, 
that works. Opponent falls to three. And now they cast another Sunfall, we can counter it. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Yeah, Aliush certainly delivered here. Pretty awesome in combination with all those pre-cards that also keep getting a discount. And then casting a free flow of knowledge in the mid to late game is also incredibly satisfying. So yeah, this mono blue deck definitely exceeded my expectations, and I'm surprised we don't see it more on the ladder. Maybe it doesn't have the best mono red aggro matchup, but even there we have some decent tools with all the cheap bounce spells, including Afara's Dispersal. Negate can be a clean answer to an opposing cell sword trying to sacrifice some large creature. So you can certainly fine-tune the deck to be better against mono red aggro, but it feels like the format is starting to slow down with more control decks showing up, and then I think mono blue is incredibly well positioned. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.